Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog free. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Unfortunately, it can also be the most dangerous time of the year for our four-legged furry family members. Holiday decorations, unhealthy sweets and treats, and cold winter weather can pose threats to our dogs. But there's one source of danger in particular that all pet parents should prepare for, the Christmas tree. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is your host, Michelle Forto, and I am the lead trainer for Alaska Dog Works. Here we work with owners and their dogs to have a better relationship. Today we are going to talk all about dogs and Christmas. Did you know that more training programs are sold in January than any other time of the year? It could be because puppies are given as gifts for Christmas, something we wholeheartedly do not recommend. Or dog owners get frustrated because their dog gets into trouble with the Christmas tree, the decorations, and the gifts. Today, we will give you some tips and tricks to have a great Christmas with your dog. The tree. Whether you use a live, fresh-cut tree or an artificial one, your Christmas tree itself will no doubt create some curiosity for your furriest family members. Just be aware of these potential dangers. Make sure your tree is very secure. Every year, curious canines tip over trees that aren't properly secured. Make sure your tree stand is sufficiently sized for your tree and, if necessary, use wires to secure the tree to a nearby wall to prevent it from falling and injuring your dog. Be careful of fallen needles. Depending on the type of tree you use, fallen needles could be mildly toxic to your dog. In particular, fur tree oils can cause mouth and stomach irritation and can lead to vomiting and upset stomach if ingested. Fallen tree needles from both live and artificial trees can cause intestinal obstruction or puncture a dog's gastrointestinal tract artificial trees especially those used year after year can become brittle over time and some are made using materials that are unsafe if ingested do not let your dog drink the tree water many live fresh cut christmas trees are treated with preservatives pesticides and fertilizers to help them stay looking their best through the holidays Additionally, many folks add aspirin or floral preservers to the water to keep trees fresh as long as possible. These additives make the tree water highly toxic to dogs. With curious pets in the home, always limit access and cover the water reservoir. The decorations. Keep lights and cords safely out of reach. Make sure any strings of lights used to decorate the tree are out of reach of your dog to avoid him being burned by a halt bulb or electric shock from chewing on a wire. 
either firmly tape cords to the wall or floor to use cord hiders to prevent access. Be careful when choosing ornaments. Many pet parents have learned the hard way to pack away the fragile glass ornaments in favor of plastic or shatterproof ornaments instead. If you have a few precious ornaments that you simply can't live without, hang them high in the tree and use a pipe cleaner or ribbon to fasten them to a branch securely. If your dog is particularly fond of his ball, like obsessed, you may consider avoiding round or ball-shaped ornaments that may be far too exciting for a fetch-driven dog. Avoid scented or edible decorations. With a dog in the house, the days of stringing together popcorn for your garland or hanging edible candy canes from the tree are long gone. Opt instead for unscented, inedible decorations that won't attract your four-legged friend. This includes your child's homemade gifts and ornaments. If your child has made a homemade ornament, even if it's just out of um, dough, the dog is still going to want to check that out. So those are precious things that we want to either put high up on the tree or maybe even a shelf to display. Scrap the metal ornament hooks. Metal hooks, although convenient and easy to use, can cause big trouble if swallowed. The lightweight hooks can also easily be caught in a wagging tail or hooked into an ear. Instead, opt for plastic ornament hooks or hang ornaments using ribbon or yarn tied in a loop. Avoid tinsel altogether. Though you may love the look of a Christmas tree drenched in silver sparkly tinsel, it's simply not worth the risk to your dog. Tinsel can very easily cause choking or intestinal blockage. Surgical intervention is almost always required to remove ingested tinsel. And by the way, who in the heck has used tinsel on their tree since like 1975? Anyways... We're still going to mention it just in case you've got some tinsel lying around up in the attic that you thought might be a good idea to put on your tree. The gifts. Don't decorate gifts with curly ribbon. Curly ribbon, much like tinsel, can become wrapped around a dog's intestines if swallowed, almost always requiring surgery to remove. Instead, just use standard gift wrapping bows to snazz up packages. Keep small wrap gifts out of reach. If a gift wrap package is small enough to fit inside your pup's curious mouth, there's a good chance it will. Keep small wrap gifts up high and out of reach. Don't place wrapped food items under the tree. (laughs) This is a lesson I actually learned the hard way a few years ago. Although that gift basket looks excellent and sealed, your dog's sense of smell is far more potent than any plastic wrap. If there's food within reach, he'll find it and very likely eat it. Keep edible gifts up high and out of reach of hungry pups. This includes boxes of gift-wrapped C's candy. Don't place wrapped food items under the tree ever. With these safeguards in place, if your dog becomes a little too curious about the Christmas tree, he should be safe from harm. However, if you simply can't keep your furry friend away, consider using an indoor pet fence to prevent access or place the tree in another room that can be closed off. If limiting access is out of the question, try spraying the tree with a deterrent like bitter apple spray. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we're going to learn all about the French Bulldog. So earlier, you learned about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Tail Wagger Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Tail Wagger Blend is their first offering, and its name and label were crowdsourced from their Facebook fans. How cool is that? The Tail Wagger Blend is a private label premium blend that was developed just for them. 
It is a medium roast from Colombian beans with tastes of Brazil nuts, grapefruit, and oak. Be sure to go to ak.dog slash free and enter to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's ak.dog slash free. Okay, guys, let's learn all about the French Bulldog. The French Bulldog resembles a bulldog in miniature, except for the large erect bat ears that are the breed's trademark feature. The head is large and square with heavy wrinkles rolled above the extremely short nose. The body beneath the smooth, brilliant coat is compact and muscular. The bright, affectionate Frenchie is a charmer. Dogs of few words. Frenchies don't bark much, but their alertness makes them excellent watchdogs. They happily adapt to life with singles, couples, or families and do not require a lot of outdoor exercise. They get on well with other animals and enjoy making new friends of the human variety. It is no wonder that city folk from Paris to Peoria swear by this vastly amusing and companionable breed. Here's some quick facts. They're adaptable, playful, and smart. The AKC breed popularity ranks them fourth out of 195. They are between 11 and 13 inches tall. They weigh under 28 pounds. They have a life expectancy of 10 to 12 years, and they are from the non-sporting group. In the mid-1800s, a toy-sized bulldog found favor in some English cities, including Nottingham, then a center for lace-making. The toy bulldog became something of a mascot for Nottingham's lace makers. It was the height of the Industrial Revolution in England, and such cottage industries as lace making were increasingly threatened. Many in the lace trade relocated to northern France, and of course, they brought their toy bulldogs with them. The little dogs became popular in the French countryside where lace makers settled. Over a span of decades, the toy bulldogs were crossed with other breeds, perhaps terriers and pugs, and along the way developed their now famous bat ears. They were given the name Bulldog Francois. Paris eventually discovered the delightful new breed and thus began the Frenchie's reputation as city dog par excellence. The breed came to be associated with Paris cafe life and with the bon vivants and fancy ladies who sought nocturnal pleasures in Parisian dance halls, Edgar Degas and Toulouse Lautrec depicted the Frenchie in paintings of the Paris Demimond. By the end of the 19th century, the Frenchie's popularity had spread across Europe and to America. The breed was a more challenging sell in England. The bulldog was a national symbol and it rankled many Englishmen that their age-old rivals, the French, would dare adapt it to their purposes. American devotees of the early 1900s contributed to the breed by insisting that the bat ear instead of the rose ear was the correct Frenchie type. It is by this distinctive feature that the Frenchie is instantly recognizable the world over. Care and Training A high-quality dog food appropriate to the dog's age will have all the nutrients the breed needs. Frenchies are prone to obesity, which can damage their physical structure and puts them at higher risk for some of the breed's health issues. So it is vital to watch their calorie intake and weight. If you choose to give your dog treats, do so in moderation. Give table scraps sparingly, if at all, especially avoiding cooked bones and foods high in fat. Learn about which human foods are safe for dogs and which are not. Check with your vet if you have any concerns about your dog's weight or diet. A short walk or outdoor play session with their owner each day should provide enough exercise to keep the French Bulldog in shape. Frenchies enjoy participating in canine sports such as obedience, agility, and rally. However, as a flat-faced breed, they are prone to breathing difficulties and should never be allowed to exert themselves in hot or humid weather. 
Early socialization and puppy training classes are recommended. Exposing the puppy to a wide variety of people, places, and situations will help him develop into a well-adjusted adult. Puppy training classes serve as a part of the socialization process, promote good behavior, and help the owner learn to recognize and correct bad habits. Frenchies have big personalities and can need a fair amount of training to make them civilized companions. They can be stubborn, but at heart, they are people pleasers and therefore easy to train. The proper motivation, such as food and making a game of the process, will ensure their cooperation. Want to learn how to train your French Bulldog to be one of the best trained dogs? Visit our website, alaskadogworks.com, to find out how. Also, do us a favor and follow us on our social channels. Just search DogWorks Radio. Did you know the best thing you can do to help us out is to tell your family and friends about our show. Let them know all about it. See you next time. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.